منه المبتدا وإليه الأمر يعود. From him we came, and to him all affairs return. وجمعنا في هذا اليوم على فكر في ما يجب أن نعيش عليه بعد خلقه وإيجاده لنا. He said in this gathering of ours here today, gathering together to reflect upon and think about why we have been created and what is upon us given this fact. وَكَفَى مَعْنًا مِنَ الْإِتِّحَادِ لِلْكَائِنَاتِ إِذَا اتَّحَدَ الْمُكَوِّنُ إِذَا كَانَ الْمُكَوِّنُ لَهَا وَاحِدًا it's enough for us to unify as humanity, given the reality that our Creator is one. فهذا الجامع العام ثم جعل لكل صنف من أصناف المخلوقات جمعا مخصوصا. So this is a general unification, but then in every category of the different elements of His creation, that He's also given them ways of unifying as well. وعلى هذا الكوكب الذي الأرضي الذي نعيش عليه وفي عالم هذه الدنيا جعل جنس الإنسان من أعلى أجناس هذا الوجود. So that we see that our Lord has placed on the planet Earth the human being being at the top of the hierarchy of created things. يعيش معه من الأجناس الحيوان والنبات والجماد. That as humans that we live among the plants, we live among animals, and we live along every other growing things that grow. And that every intelligent person sees that all of these things mentioned have been made subservient to the human being. فترتب على الإنسان نفسه وكيفية انطلاقه في حركة الحياة الصلاح والفساد. So that we see then the importance of the human being and to the extent of their rectification or corruption will be to the extent that the balance of the earth is in place. That all human beings share similar benefits that they are seeking for themselves and they all have similar needs as well. وإذا نظرنا إلى حقائق ميزة هذا الجنس من الوجود عن بقية أجناس الوجود نجدها تتمثل في قيمه وأخلاقه وروحانيته. And so that if we look deeply into what is the distinguishing characteristic of this type of creation, meaning the human being, that we find it is in their ability to have noble character traits. وعند ذكرنا لتاريخ البشرية في مختلف بقاع الأرض من أول الزمان إلى زماننا الحاضر نجد أن كل ما يصح أن يكون محاسن ومحامد على وجه الحقيقة لها اتصال وثيق بتعليم الأنبياء وهديهم and that if we study history from the first man until modern times, then what we'll find is that everything that could be considered to be from the Mahasan, something that is praiseworthy, that you will see in it a connection to one of the prophets and messengers that have been sent to mankind. لا يمكننا أن نجد جمالا في ما يتعلق بالفكر وفي ما يتعلق بالتعامل منفصلا عما جاء به الأنبياء قط. That there can be no beauty, whether it is related to fikr, reflection, or whether it is related to ta'amal, dealing with others, except that it must stem from one of the early prophetic messages. The greatest duty of the prophets is to be an example and lead the creation to their creator. والدلالة هذه تكون للمكلفين من الناس. And that this leading to the Creator is done to those that are legally responsible. لما تميزوا به من ملكة الاختيار في التصرف. 
because that they have been distinguished with the ability to choose their actions. And that they have the ability to make various different decisions. And that they can extend any of those choices that they choose to affect others. Either positively or negatively. So that we see it's only humans that truly have the ability to be rational animals and that they have the ability to choose and that this is why that they have been given a divine methodology to interact on the face of the earth. So it is the prophets and messengers, may the peace and blessing of God be upon them all, they are the ones that have been entrusted in conveying the divine will to creation. وتحت تصرفهم نجد قمة القيم التي تخدم الإنسانية. That if we look at the interpersonal dealings and the way that they dealt with others and the different ways that they judge to according to the situations that they're in, that we find all of this was of the highest moral standard. فهم عندما يجيئون بالشرايع الإلهية يصادفون الناس في انطلاقهم في حركة الحياة على مصالح متعددة تتعلق بالصناعة أو بالزراعة أو بالتجارة فما كان في شيء من هدي الأنبياء قصر ولا حصر لهذه الحركة ولكن تهذيب وتأديب وتنمية لها divine methodologies for the way human beings should live and they found people working with one another for shared benefit whether they be related to agriculture or business commerce or the like that they didn't bring a way that would separate people from these various endeavors that they're in rather it would be brought a way that would prune them and bring out the best elements of them and provide principles for them to, to do this وعندما يعتزلون كل ما يخالف الشرائع من أعمال القوم في نفس الوقت يقرون ما يتوافق مع مصلحة البشرية مما يكون مصلحة خالصة لا ضرر فيه على البشر And so that we see that from among these principles is, is that their true concern was what was going to be of benefit for the human being in general, in humanity, even despite, even if it would be that it would go against something their particular people used to do. نجد أمثال سيدنا الخليل إبراهيم تعرض للظلم والإضطهاد. So that we see an example in the great prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, that he was susceptible to a type of tyranny and oppression. Such that he was catapulted into the fire, but God protected him from being burned and it was peaceful and cool upon him. And despite the way that others dealt with him, he was still well known that he was the quote father of guests and he was extremely generous. وفي اتساع أفقه في إعمال معاني الإكرام للآخرين. And so that when the horizons are expanded in terms of our dealing with others with generosity. وقف على بابه يوما من لا يؤمن بالله سبحانه وتعالى فدعاه إلى الإيمان بالله فأبى فذهب ولم يضيفه. So one time a unbeliever came to visit him and knocked at his door and he called him to belief in God and when the man refused to believe that he then left and he didn't offer him any hospitality. 
فأوحى الله إليه لما قصرت في ضيافة هذا الإنسان الذي وقف على بابك Then God revealed to him and said to him Why did you not show this man any hospitality that came to visit you? قال دعوته إلى الإيمان بك فلم يوم فغفلت عن أن أقدم له الضيافة And he responded by saying that I called him to belief and he refused to believe and I was neglectful to show him hospitality. And then God revealed to Abraham and said that despite the fact that he's disbelieved in me, that I have provided from him from the day that I have created him. And so he just came to ask you food on one for one, on one day, particular day, and you didn't give him anything, show him any hospitality. And so then Abraham went out to look for him until he found him and invited him to his house. He said that you know I just left your house. Why are you asking me to come back now? He said, because Allah has rebuked me because the way I dealt with you. He said that uh, your God rebuked you for the way you dealt with me and I'm an unbeliever. And then Abraham said to him that he told me that he is the one that created you and from the time, day he created you that he's provided for you. فقال تعال أول أؤمن بإلهك هذا ثم أقبل ضيافتك. He said first let me believe in this God of yours and then I'll accept your hospitality. كان هذا المظهر في التعامل مع الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلم عليهم واضحا جليا في سيرتهم. That this way of dealing with others was extremely apparent in the lives of the prophets. فإذا حكموا في أي منطقة من المناطق وجد العائشون في تلك المناطق حريتهم في كل ما لا يضر الآخرين. So that if they judged in any place or region that there were people under their jurisdiction that you would find that people would live with a high level of freedom as long as that they were not harming others. ووجدوا إنصافا في إقامة الحكم بلا جور ولا حيف. And that they would have found pure justice without any excessiveness in either way. ولا شك أن الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلم عليهم أعظم مكانة ومنزلة من مجرد العقل البشري الذي يحكم بالإنصاف إذ الدافع وراء ذلك. But we see that the prophets are very different even than the most intelligent people given the fact that they receive revelation from God that it's beyond mere judging with the intellect. But if the two are combined such that you have the impulse of the innate disposition of the human being and you add to that a and you combine to that the blessing of revelation that this will bring about the greatest outcome possible. القيم والعناصر الطيبة في الأوصاف التي تخدم البشر. That were the uh, intellectuals of today's time to really trace back their origins and all of their individual historical narratives and to bring out and extract from them the shared values and traits that are agreed upon. لو وجدوا أن مجموعة ذلك يحكي مسالك الأنبياء. That you would find that the group of these are in a comprehensive fashion that all of them have a foundation in the previous prophetic messages. And that by doing this, that it will help them in a great way to prevent a lot of the differing in problems that are happening among people. 
نرى هذا الوعي الذي تمكن في عقول الصحابة على يد النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فحينما تولى الخلافة عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عنه وأرسل حاكما إلى مصر أرسل عمر بن العاص حاكما يحكم مصر بعد أن فتحت مصر تكلم معه بكلمتين تحكي العمق في هذا الوعي وما كانت مكانة القيم في الحكومة في مصالح البشر so that we see an example of this in the consciousness of one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, that when he dealt with the governor of Egypt, who was under his jurisdiction of that time, that he spoke to him in using two words or a short sentence which shows and, and illustrates and a great example of this. <laughs> He said, know that, that I have put you in power and that the one who looks over his people is one of two. <laughs> that all of those under your jurisdiction are either your brother in religion or your brother in humanity. <laughs> so deal justly with them. وَعَلَمْ أَنِّي وَلَّيْتُكَ عَلَيْهِمْ فَأَنْتَ فَوْقَهُمْ and know that I have put you in charge over them and that you have to answer to me and that we all have to answer to God. That these words that he spoke to the governor that shows the foundations of his methodology and despite the fact that there were some from among them that had waged war previously against him. فلم يكن مواجهتهم بالقتال مانعة من أن يعدوا إخوانا. That despite the fact that they had waged war against him, that it didn't prevent him from still calling them his brothers slash sisters in humanity. إخوان الخلق والإنسانية. That they are brothers of humanity. وظلت ديانات في البلد التي حكمت بالإسلام غير الإسلام. And so that in the places where there became to, there was eventually Islamic rule that there always remained non-Muslim minorities. إلى حد أن الفئات التي كانت مظلومة بالحكم السابق قبل دخول الإسلام وجدت الإنصاف في ظل هذا الحكم. Until in many cases where these previously religious communities that they were being oppressed by the governments of their time that they found much repose and peace being ruled by Islam. And so recently to bring forth an example that we met one of the archbishops, the archbishops of Egypt in the United Arab Emirates, and he actually he told me that our that we didn't know as a Christian people uh, uh, tranquility and as, have a serene life until that we are being ruled by Islam. And another event that took place in the life of the second Caliph Omar that a Coptic Christian from Egypt that came to, came to him in Medina that the son of the governor of Egypt, Amr ibn al-As, that he slapped him in the face. And so he asked him what had happened. So the Christian man said, the Coptic Christian said to Omar, that he and my son, that they were racing. And then when the son of the governor, Amr ibn al-As, that he beat in the race, my son, that he slapped him and said, or actually the, the, the son of the Christian man beat him in the race, and the son of Amr ibn al-As slapped him and said, that are you going to beat me? And I am the son 
uh, the one who is most honorable. فَتَبَيَّنَ عُمَرُ مِنْ وُجُوءِ الْحَادِثَةِ كَمَا ذُكِرَتْ So that uh, Sayyidina Umar, the second caliph, made sure that this was actually, it happened as he said. وَوَجَّهَ كِتَابًا إِذَا أَمِيرِ مُسْرِ يَقُلْ اِقْبِلْ عَلَيَّ مَعَ إِبْنِكَ فُلَانْ أَوَّلْ مَا يَصِلُ كِتَابِي And then he immediately wrote a letter to the governor, Amr ibn As and his son, and said that as soon as this letter reaches you, that come to see me immediately in Medina. فَأَقْبَلَ وَجَاءَ إِلَيْهِ That they both came. فَقَالَ صَدَرَ مِنَ بْنِكَ كَذَا وَكَذَا And Omar said that your son did such and such a thing. قَالَ نَعَمْ وَلَمْ أَعْلَمْ يَا أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَمْ أَرْضَ بِذَلِكَ وَلَمْ أَمْرُهُ بِذَلِكَ He said, yes, I heard, O commander of the faithful, but I did not know that he did that, nor did I tell him to do it. فَقَالَ لِلْقِبْطِ قُلْ لِي بْنِكَ يَقُمْ فَيَلْطُمُ الَّذِي لَطَمَهُ وَيَقُولُ لَهُ خُذْهَا وَأَنْتَ بِنُ الْأَكْرَمِينَ And then Omar said to the son of the Coptic Christian to stand up and go to the son of Amr ibn As and to smack him back in the face and say that take this now and you are the son of the Ibn al-Akramin, the son of the Most Honorable. فَلَمَّا اِقْتَصَّ مِنْهُ قَالَ وَأَدِيرُ السَّيْفَ مِنْ فَوْقَ عَلَى رَاسِ عَمْرِ and that once that he took his retribution, that they said to him to uh, move a sword about on top of the head of uh, the, his son. He said that why would we do this, that you know, we've, we've already received retribution. He said that the only reason that you felt that you could say such a thing was that you were the son of the governor and relying upon your governorship. This is to uh, let you to be let you know that you need to pay attention in the future. So that if these values exist in the leaders, that you will find that by means of them, it will be very easy for people to live felicitous lives and live in safety and tranquility. And that even more than that, it will help everyone to have the realities unveiled to them in the deepest of ways. And so that we see respecting these values and the emanation of justice from those that are in charge is that this is a, a defin definitive part of the prophetic message. فَإِنْدَمَا عُدِمَتُ الْحُرِّيَّةُ فِي مَنْطَقَةٍ وَاتُّهِدَ فِيهَا أَتْبَاعُ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم اختار لهم في الظروف الصعبة أن يهاجروا إلى أرض ملك كان نصرانيا لكن النبي وصفه بوصف So we see an example of this in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the companions, when in their local environment that they were being extremely oppressed. And so that he commanded him, then, peace be upon him, to go to Ethiopia to a Christian king that would take care of them. And he described, that, he described this Ethiopian king uh, with a particular statement. <laughs> So he said, go to Ethiopia because they have a king there that he refuses to let anyone be oppressed in his presence. And in reality, this is exactly what happened when this delegation of Muslims went there and that they lived in Ethiopia that it was, as, it was as the Prophet had previously said, 
and they themselves benefited as well as the local Ethiopians. واستعملت وسائل لأجل إيجاع الضر والظلم من قبل الحكومة بمكة حينما أرسلت هم مشركون إلى ملك الحبشة ليرد هؤلاء القوم يمنعهم من البقاء في أرضه فتبين الأمر وأنصف. So then we see what had happened was that when this delegation came to the Christian king, that some of the people of the Prophet's tribe that they then sent their own delegation that they tried to intervene in allowing the Ethiopian king to accept these individuals and the way they went about doing this that it was clarified and it became clear the difference between the two. واشتهرت قبيلة من بين العرب أنهم كانوا لا يواجهون في معركة إلا انتصروا. That there was a particular tribe of the Arabs that became famous that never once were they involved in a battle or engaged in war except that they would be victorious. فلما وفد وافدهم بالإسلام إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سألهم. That after they accepted Islam and a delegation came to the Prophet that he asked them. قال بما كنتم تغلبون من قبلكم. He said that what is the secret about why you're always victorious when you fought. فقالوا إن لا نبدأ أحدا بظلم. He said that we never oppress others. وأمرنا لكبيرنا. He said that we allow the elderly among us to make the decisions. ويعيش فقيرنا معنا كغنينا بالسوية. And that the poor live among us in the same way as the rich and wealthy. فأقر النبي أن هذه الأوصاف سبب نزول النصر من الله تعالى لمن كانت فيه. And then the prophet confirmed that these three things were the means of their being giving victory by God. وحذر في هديه من دعوة المظلوم يقول ولو كان ذلك المظلوم كافرا بالله تعالى. And that he warned people, peace be upon him, to be aware of the supplication of the oppressed person. Even if this be a non-Muslim. وبعد ذلك مع افتخار كل من البشرية بشيء من القيم التي تكون في تاريخها. And that if we look then that at the historical development and all of the different shared values in the different backgrounds of different people. البشرية بحاجة إلى تجاوز مرحلة مجرد الافتخار وذكر التاريخ إلى 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 ذوق ووجدان وتحقيق واقعي. That everyone is proud of their historical backgrounds, but we have to move beyond merely being proud of them in order to really deal and to bring about true solutions to the problems of our time. فما الفائدة من ذكر التاريخ إن لم يثمر عبرة وتأثيرا في في الحاضر؟ What is the benefit of mentioning historical examples if it doesn't bring take to fruition something that lessons that we can put into implement in the present time؟ ولكن نعلم أن به بالنسبة لأتباع الأنبياء يجب أن يأخذوا مجال تحقيقهم لواقع القيم أنه مجال عبادة يتقربون بها إلى الله تعالى. But if we look at the followers of the various prophets and messengers, that we see for sure that all of these great values and traits that they had, that they considered to be a ladder by in means for them to get close to the Creator. ومجالو اختلاف الرأي في ما لا يتعلق بالإضرار بالغير واسع بل ضروري في واقع البشر لكن الإشكال في أن يتجاوز الحد إلى إقامة الحواجز بين الناس أو البغضاء والشحنة. So that we see that that when people differ upon certain issues, as long as those issues are not directly related to harming other, that this differing in the different views that people have, that this is acceptable. Rather, it is necessary that different people view things in different ways 
but we have to, give, given that as well, that we have to realize that it, it is, there's a standard that everyone must fulfill. بل أبعد من ذلك نجد توجيهات في الوحي لو جامت لو جام البغض للآخر على أساس صحيح والأساس الصحيح وقد هو ظلم وطغيان الآخر أنه مع ذلك كله لا يجوز أن يوصل إلى حد أن يظلم هذا أو أن يبخس حقه ولو كان مبغوضا بحق and so that it should never lead to dissension and hatred of others and so that even when we see it there being times within the methodologies or sacred laws of the different prophets and messengers where there's a valid instance where someone could have a dislike in his heart towards another individual it can never reach the point where they transgress against their rights <laughs> فلا يحملكم بغضكم لهم وإن بغضتموهم بحق ألا تعدلوا عند الحكم. So that we see God says in the Quran and never let a the hatred for of another people allow you to be unjust. That be just because it is closer to piety and meaning that despite this feeling that one might have in their heart, it can never leave outwardly. To an unjust act. ويقول في الآية الأخرى ولا يجرمنكم شنأن قوم أن صدوكم عن المسجد الحرام أن تعتدوا. In another verse that we see that God says that do not let the hatred of a people that they have barred you from coming to the Masjid al-Haram, the sacred sanctuary in Mecca, in Mecca that that they, that even though they have barred you from the sacred sanctuary and تعتدوا to show enmity towards them. وإن منعوكم عن دخول المسجد الحرام بغير حق وسلبوا حريتكم في ذلك وحالوا بينكم وبين أداء عبادة في دينكم مع ذلك كله فلا يجوز أن يحملكم هذا على العدوان فالعدوان محرم في كل الأحوال. So despite everything that they did in preventing you from coming to the holy sanctuary and everything that was related to that that given this, it should never, and it's impermissible for any situation to show enmity towards them or transgress against their rights. And so that we see that if these values are firmly established in people, uh, in, in governments, in, in leaders, that it will affect the reality of the way things go, that even to the furthest extent, even in relation to war. الأمثلة كثيرة ويذكر ابن جبير في رحلته التي رحلها إلى ال الحرمين في عهد صلاح الدين الأيوبي ما كان قائم من الحرب. بينه وبين من يحاربه في ذاك الوقت من النصارى ومع ذلك فتجار المسلمين وتجار النصارى ينتقلون من هذه البلدة إلى هذه البلدة في ممارسة تجارتهم لا يؤثر عليهم ذلك الحرب شيئا ولا يفرض عليهم هذا أو ذاك منعا من الدخول إذ المسالمون في طريقهم وإنما الحرب بين من تصدى وتعدى للحرب فقط فما كان عندهم تفكير سلب حريات ولا فرض حصارات فكان يذكر عن دخول هؤلاء وهؤلاء من أراضي هؤلاء إلى أراضي هؤلاء مسلمين ونصارى من التجار في مزاولة تجارتهم في أمن واستقرار حتى في أيام الحرب so there's a number of examples that we could mention from the best of them is that Ibn Jubair, the great explorer that mentions in his chronicles that uh, during the time of Saladin, Salah ad-Din Ayyubi, that he went to uh, Saudi Arabia, present day Saudi Arabia, Mecca and Medina. And keep in mind that this was during the Crusades and there was wars taking place between uh, the Christian and Muslim civilization. But he said what he noticed was, was that despite that these wars were taking place, that the Christian and Muslim merchants that were able to go back and forth 
even though that these wars were going on. And so he said this is a very good example of that the way that they viewed things and the justice that was being established, that the war was taking place among the soldiers, but the merchants were able to go uh, back and forth and they didn't have an understanding of placing embargoes upon people or limiting people's freedom. Rather, that they still opened the doors and gave people that were Musadi Moon, that were a part of a peace treaty, the ability to have safety. عندما تضيق الجيم واتساع الفكر أبسط خلاف يؤثر على الناس وينعكس على من لا دخل له في القضية. And so that we sign when people look at things narrowly and they have a very limited scope that the least disagreement will lead to all kinds of problems and even extend on to others that were not originally even part of the problem. تعظم حاجتنا وحاجة البشرية اليوم إلى تركيز الجيم والجيام بالدور في تثبيتها في ربوع مجتمعاتنا. He said that we and humanity altogether, that it is of the utmost importance that we focus upon firmly establishing these shared values in the people of our societies. والأمر يعتمدون على يعتمد على المتحررين من العصبية والمتحررين من إرادة التشدد بالكلام إلى منصفين واقعيين يخرجون بمعاني الجيم إلى معاملاتهم ويطبقونها في واقعهم. And so that we have to move beyond individuals who have extremist views or are only giving lip service to what we are mentioning to people that really seriously want to make these values become a part of the fabric of the society that they live in. That we're in conclusion that we're going to, we want to end with an example of the values of how, uh, of what a true, of, of true governance. لما فتح النبي خيبر طلب منه اليهود أن يبقيهم في الأرض على أن يعملوا فيها ويكون لهم نصف الثمرة فقبل ذلك منهم وأمن لهم العيش والاقتصاد والأمن في ذاك المكان على على الجيم. And so that we see in the a prophetic example in the life of the Prophet Muhammad in the Jewish fortress of Khaybar that despite everything that happened that they asked the Prophet to allow them to move out of Medina to another place given the condition that they would give him the proceeds of half of their uh, produce that came from their farms. And so that ever on a yearly basis the Prophet would send someone, Abdullah bin Umar, Abdullah bin Rawaha, Abdullah bin Rawaha and to, to estimate how much produce would, would come for that year and then they would take half. فأرادوا أن يتوصلوا إلى الإخلال في الميزان بتقدير الثمر ومهدوا لذلك. That they tried to uh, find a way to trick him so that they could actually give him less than half. فأرسلوا إلى النبي يشتكون أن صاحبك يثقل التقدير وي 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 ويقدر زيادة. So they sent someone to the Prophet and said that your companion that is placing, uh, is, is, is misusing uh, the balances so that he can actually take more. And so that when he uh, came to them, that he offered to uh, give them uh, some, some money as compensation for the, uh, the discrepancy. فلما عرضوا عليه ذلك قال إني جيتكم من عندي أحب الناس إلي. And that they tried to bribe him. Okay, excuse me. And so that when he came back, uh, that he said that I've come to you from the best of people. ولأنتم من أبغض الناس إلي. And that you are from the uh, most uh, uh, detested people to to him. ووالله ما يحملني حب إياه ولا بغضي لكم على أن أزيد في التقدير تمره ولا أنقصها. And he said that uh, he said that by God 
He said that my love for him or my dislike for you, that it doesn't affect me at all to even change the balance even one gram. He said that are you trying to bribe me with money and then I will be punished in the fire? And so some of the Jewish scholars looked to the others and they said with this justice that we find the uh, establishment of the heavens and earth. That the point we're bringing across is this statement of, uh, of him where he said that despite my inner feelings of love for the Prophet and dislike for you, that it will not allow me to change anything outwardly. I'll be completely just. لأهل العطاء الحسن والمستوى العالي من البشرية وراء العدل إحسان. That in even beyond justice, that there is an opportunity for human being to move into the realms of excellence. وقيم رسخت في نفوس القابلين لها المرتجين إلى مستواها في مجازاة السيئة بالحسنة. And such that the values that stem from these individuals that prepare themselves to deal with others with this excellence to not only overlooking bad things that people do to them, but responding in the best of ways. As long as this is in the respect of one's own rights and it's not related to others. وكل من يؤمن بعد ذلك منا بحياة الأبد والبقاء لا تعثره هذه الحياة القصيرة في تسبب له إضاعة النعيم الدائم بعد هذه الحياة. So that we all have to live together uh, to try to live in the most felicitous of ways as long as we are in this short life of ours on the face of this earth and for those that believe in the next world that we need to refrain from doing things that will harm this final outcome. عفواً على الإطالة وكتب الله لنا ولكم النفع والقبول وشكراً لمنسقي الحفل وزيرة التجارة ومن قام بالتنسيق حتى يتمعنا وإياكم مع أهل البرلمان فشكروا لأهل البرلمان ومن تسبب في إقامة الحفل والله يجعل في ذلك خيراً لنا أجمعين. And so that he apologizes for uh, going on for so long and he supplicated God to accept this gathering from us and to bless us all to be uh, a benefit to humanity. And he thanks everyone who took part, in particular the parliament and the official members from them for the gathering that took place today. And he thanks everyone again for everything. أسئلة فيها مقررة كم دقائق ولا؟ And I want also want to, to thank uh, all of you for being here today and thank you very much uh, for your most enlightening uh, lecture. I'm sure all of us will take away some very important lessons from today, particularly those which apply to our multi-faith society in Australia where we respect religious diversity, we respect the fact that Australians have different religions but that we can live together as one nation committed to the future of Australia. Thank you very much.